Okay, you guys, today I have a really fun, fun interview with Amy Williams, and she is over on Instagram as Abs by Amy, and she is a mom of six kids. Yes, you heard that right. Six kids. She's married, has six kids. She's competed before. She has a wealth of programs over on her website, which I am also going to link up in the show notes as well, but it's absbyamyfitness.com. You can check that out. Make sure you go follow her over on Instagram. She has some really funny reels. She has a lot of great content there. Today's episode, we talked about her show, post-show binging, why she doesn't compete anymore, how she kind of juggles her fitness with her kids and like all of her kids activities, right? She's got a lot of, a lot of little ones and and juggling all that. What she feels like is the most important thing to do to be successful with your fitness and so much more. So go ahead, take a seat, take a listen and enjoy the episode. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Brad is amazing. And he's like, you guys will just hit it off. It'll be great. And um, I've been like obsessively consuming your Instagram stuff. And it's so much fun. (laughs) It's so much fun. So I just want to keep it super conversational. That's how most of my interviews are, if you're okay with that. Yeah, um, that's great. I know that we're, we're going to get into like the mom stuff because I have a lot of moms who listen to the podcast, but mm-hmm. I'm super curious as to what got you into competing. Now I know you've done one show. I saw your photos. Amazing. And we'll uh-huh. get into a little bit more about that, but, um, what got you into that? Cause a lot of my listeners are athletes and competitors and then people who are kind of lurking as curious in, in the bodybuilding yeah. world. And I would just love to hear your take on why that was like a goal for you? Honestly. It, okay. So I started out my journey just like, I was just like doing it for me. And I was just, I committed to myself. I had no intentions of anything. And so I just started going to the gym and I was there every single day. So obviously I met new people and became friends with people. And as I started to, you know, uh, lose fat and gain muscle, um, some of the gym regulars who had become my friends were like, you should compete. And I said, what's that? I had no idea. I literally had no idea about anything, um, what it was or what it entailed. And so I had a couple of friends, um, who kind of talked me through it. And then I just, I, I, it was about, it was about a year and a half after I got started. And so then I didn't really think a whole lot of, or do any research on it other than just what they told me. And I just like, signed up with a coach and just went for it. And so that's honestly how I got started is, is, um, was people asking like, do you compete? Do you compete? And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. And so anyway, so yeah, so that's how, that's how I got into that. And I wouldn't say I compete. I have done a show. Right. I have competed before. Yes. yes. And I did see that, but I think it's remarkable that you just like, Oh sure. I'm going to do this thing. Right. Where like people ruminate on that for like years and they just like, you know, they think of it as a bucket list goal and they just, yeah. you know, they just think too much and you just were like, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. But you also <laughs> came from a competitive background, right? Like you were in sports. Uh, Not like really, no, no um, track. I, I mean, you did track. I I did track, yes. but I was I I never played like basketball or softball or anything like that. I did track, um, and I did I did love that. I was a sprinter. Mm-hmm. I did cheerleading, which is not really. I mean, you can go to competitions, but it was more just like a high school sport that mm-hmm. I did. So, I'm I'm very competitive with myself. I'm not very competitive with other people, yeah. but with myself, I am, and so I like to. In fact, in cheerleading, I was the most improved cheerleader just because I tried so hard. Yeah, but I think that's amazing because, you know, I think if you've done things like cheerleading and, you know, you've done track, so you're used to like, there's a, there's an end goal, right? Like you, you're, Mm -hmm. you're putting together a routine for cheerleading or you're, you know, you're getting ready for a track meet or something like that. So bodybuilding granted is like a huge chunk to bite off for sure to do a show, but still you have yeah. like that mentality of like, okay, this is thing that I'm doing and I have to like reverse engineer my life to like make that happen. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, like the first thing I did was before, before the show that 
honestly got me out of that mindset of I can't. And what made me just jump in and do this show was during like the first year of my journey, I remember seeing a mom at the gym. I knew she had had kids, but she had a rock and six pack. And I was like, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. And mm-hmm. so for the next year following that, I worked so hard on my abs. And that's honestly how I got the nickname abs by Amy, because all the regulars would see that I was always doing core work and mm-hmm. ab work. And they'd be like, oh, there's abs by Amy. And it stuck. And okay. Now, that I'm was gonna be, now I'm stuck with it. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be one of my questions. Like, how did abs by Amy come to be? So that makes perfect that's, sense. Yeah. It's literally a nickname that was given to me. But anyway, I started to like, notice my abs. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Like I grew the muscle there. And so when that was my goal and took a whole year before I even saw any of Mm -hmm. my abs, but, Mm -hmm. um, but from that point on, I like completely got out of my head of what isn't and is, you know, what is or isn't possible. Right. Because it was like, Oh, I've had six kids. I'm never going to have abs, but Mm -hmm. I decided to try, you know? Yeah. So you, your first competition, you already had your six kids. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. None, none, of, none of this started until after I had my last baby. Oh wow. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. That's incredible. We're going to get more into that in a second, but, um, yeah. I always like to give like the good, the bad, the ugly when it comes to competing. And like some people do it once and they're like fun, we'll never do it again. Or they're like, eh, it was just like a season in my life. Like what, how was that process for you? Like, what did I am you think? So glad you're asking that yeah. question because honestly, I, Had I, had I done more research, I told you that I just dove right in. I didn't know a whole lot about it. Had I done more research and, and talked to more people and found, found out the good, the bad and ugly, I don't know if I would have done it, Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm very grateful I did because it taught me so much about my body, my, my mental state, my relationship with food, my relationship with my body, my discipline. It taught me a whole lot, but it was very, it was a very hard hard lesson to learn. Definitely. Very hard lesson to learn. Yeah. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you is like, what did you like, what was the biggest takeaway that you had from that? Like looking back now, just honestly, I had, so I had kind of a crappy, uh, crappy prep because I did my, I was just going to do one, one and done show, you know, and, but I, I did my prep and it got canceled March of 2020. Of I was course. on my peak week the week of my show, uh-huh. it, it got canceled. And so like, I went through a whole rebound where, you know, you kind of gain weight after the show because I had this horrible relationship with food. I was literally, I was so lean. I was like obsessed with peanut butter, obsessed with mm-hmm. food. And so as soon as that got canceled, I, I binged, like, mm-hmm. I just remember it was my daughter's birthday in March. I just remember like, eating like a Costco size cake. And I was so sick yeah. and I just like, I couldn't stop eating. And I absolutely binged because I had never been on that extreme of dieting. Mm-hmm. And so needless to say, I had to really balance out my relationship with food, but mm-hmm. I did continue my prep. I finally got into the, um, got on, stepped on stage in August. And then had I, you know, I did go through that rebound in March. And so I was kind of aware what was happening in August, but it still is hard on you to get down to that level of lean and then, um, come back out of it. And when you, when you put on that healthy body fat that you need so badly, cause like my cycle stopped and everything, yeah. it messes with your mind. Mm-hmm. It messes with your mind. You're not fat. You're not fat. But no. the fact that you feel like you feel this like fluffy bloatiness, you feel it. And when you put on a little bit of fat, like it messes with your mind and you just think that you are. And it's, it's really hard to get through. Yeah, it really is. It's a huge challenge for most women coming out of a show. And, you know, you can try to like reverse diet and do all that stuff. If you have a coach that does that with you, but even then I, I Mm -hmm. equate it to like, you know, it's like if you take a lion out of a cage and you're like, okay, you can only have like half of this steak. Remember, like we're, we're trying to like work your appetite up. You're like a ravenous mm-hmm. beast. Like after yeah, a show, yeah. you can't just be like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to eat. You know, some people can do it, but it's very, very challenging. Yes. Yeah. I, there's, there's very, I, I think I can only think of one girl off the top of my head that has ever reverse dieted properly really well. Yeah. yeah properly. Like, because you know, you take your body to that extreme and it's just, your body's like fighting, fighting back. Right. And then did you have the experience post show where 
you know, a lot of my clients are like, they love the, the, the feedback that they're getting from people, right? Like in the gym, people are like, Oh, you look so great. You're doing a show. And they're just like super excited. And then after yeah. the show, they kind of go through this like blues period where like now they're putting on body fat and like nobody's really saying anything and they don't have yeah. the show now. I don't know if you experienced that, but I noticed that a lot with, with clients. Yeah, no, I know for sure. Because everybody thinks like the shredded look, you know, who the people who don't know better, like I was one of those people yeah. who, who don't really understand the sport. They just think, oh my gosh, you're so shredded. It's so cool. But they don't know what goes on behind of it, behind it. And that's why you get that kind of feedback. And so then we don't, when you look more fit, but normal, yeah. it's like, oh man, you don't stand out. And so I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big challenge. Definitely. So now you're not competing anymore. It sounds like that was like a, an experience you that you did that, but you have like a phenomenal, obviously physique, you know, still not being even competitive. What does that look like for you now? Like, obviously you got into fitness and you carried it on, but what does your training look like and your cardio? It seems like you're, you know, you've got it all down. You've got it nailed in and it's, it's routine. <laughs> Do you, know, you know, I was talking with one of my friends the other day about, about this exactly, because in all honesty, I have found a really happy balance where I am happy with where I'm at. I'm happy with my relationship with food. Cause I did, I was, I was on the extreme mm -hmm. just like we talked about. And I feel like I'm at a really good place where I'm consistent in the gym. I don't track my food. I, I try to hit my protein, but I, I always, am, you know, coming in low unless I'm goal oriented, which right now I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's awesome. I go, I have pizza with my kids on Friday night. I, I eat really good most of the time because of how it makes me feel mm -hmm. not because I think I have to, but I feel better eating better. And, you know, I enjoy treats and I just, I show up at the gym and, you know, it's just, that's just a good balance. Yeah. Do you feel like it took you a minute to kind of recalibrate after your show to find oh, that a, balance a year, even after August? Year. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was like a year, maybe, maybe two years. It, it's been almost, it's been like two and a half years. I would say it was a good it was probably a good solid 18 months mm -hmm. before like I wasn't looking at those pictures being like, oh, I wish I was that lean again. Like, oh, that was so cool. Or because I just I know what it took and that extreme mm -hmm. lifestyle was just, it didn't bring me joy. It was an awesome accomplishment that I'm so glad I did, but it was not what brings me joy. What brings me joy now is being able to go out with my friends, out to eat, um, to be able to hit PRs in the gym and being strong, feeling strong not feeling hungry all the time, not obsessing about food. So that's like where I'm like, I like living my life right now. For sure. It's, it's total freedom. I don't compete anymore. So I do you? a thousand percent resonate with you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've done, I've competed for over 10 years and it, you know, exactly what you're saying. I'm like, yep, I know. I know that all too well. <laughs> you know, you know, way better than I do. I mean, I only, I only dabbled into it just enough to be like, Okay. Okay. I think I've experienced that. Yeah, yeah. But so it sounds like for you, weight training is a solid foundation of your training even now post show. Oh yeah. Because it, it, it felt good to be strong. Yes, it does. It's amazing. <laughs> it feels so good to be strong. I love being able to like increase my weight and get more reps and lift here. It feels so good. It's literally exhilarating. And when I teach my classes and I see women in my classes, like do the same thing. It's written all over their faces. Like mm -hmm. I just did that. Yeah. That it's so rewarding. Amazing. It's so mm -hmm. rewarding. So rewarding. Yeah. It's, um, you know, my life's work is like convincing women that like not chasing the scale, you know, and, and getting in the gym and being strong and the body goals will come, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, just keep organically doing it, for yes. sure. They come organically. Like it takes years it does. It does. And I think, you know, um, just coaching women, new nutrition, it's the, the fat loss part or like, Hey, give me a diet or put me on this extreme diet is so like mm -hmm. attractive to them because they'll lose weight quickly and all that. And I'm like the pay, the, the beauty and the payoff is in lifting, right? Because you know that over time that's going to change the shape of your body. Um, but getting mm -hmm. women, you know, the part of my podcast mission is like getting women to see that, like the, that's the long game. It's like the tortoise versus the hare. Exactly. But it's so worth it. It is so worth it. And that's like what I preach to my, um, well, I don't take coaching clients anymore, but like just, you know, people now is that if you can just stop trying to diet, 
just don't, just don't even bother dieting, just eat at a maintenance and lift weights. Like your body is going to transform. Like it is going to take shape. It's going to that. And then at that point, when, when you've been doing it for a while, you have a great relationship with the gym, then maybe try, try a cut, but don't just like jump in and be like, I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to do this three Mm -hmm. month cut. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And then it's like, then they get disappointed with the results after three months when it's like three months is just the beginning. Totally. It's so funny that you say that because I have a personal training studio as well. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times new, you know, especially the beginning of the year, women will come in and they want to sign up for training. They want to sign up for diet coaching. They want like the whole enchilada. And almost every time, unless they have like a good experience with like lifting and they know how to count macros and they just kind of like need to get back in the swing of things. Most of the time I talk them completely out of doing the nutrition piece. I'm like, Oh yeah, let's just get you training because this is going to be something new. You have to like build into your life now. And if I give you that, And then you have to now like track your macros and like learn how to eat healthy and all that. Like, let's just get some small wins under your belt. And like, then we can add the nutrition for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Like when I started my, when I started my journey, people think like I was doing everything at once and I was not. Okay. I was not. I literally, I just started at the gym period. Yeah. I just started going to the gym and then I was like, okay, I'm going to track my calories. And so I didn't know what macros were at that point. So I was going to the gym every day. I got that into ha- I got into that habit and then I started tracking my calories. I did that for mm, 9 months or so. So I you know, it, I made it a habit and then I was like, okay, what are these macros all about? Mm-hmm. So I kind of dabbled into like you know, setting macros and just watching them. I didn't really know what I was doing with them, but I was just kind of tracking them, watching them. So I started getting familiar with them and then it that was another, I don't know, six months. And then that, at that point was when I got the coach mm-hmm. for my show. And then I learned through him about like where to set macros for certain goals and yada, yada, yada. But that wasn't even until over a year yeah. into my journey. Like it was such a slow learning process. And so I think like how your clients say, they just want to bite off everything and they just want to do this and this and this and this. Yeah. It's like, Back it up, yeah. get some patience, and just do a little bit at a time. Yeah, because, I mean, you, that's a beautiful example. You know, you just were like, hey, I'm going to start the gym. I don't really know. I'm just going to get in there. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you you know, once you got that habit underway and it became yeah. a part of your routine, then you just layered the nutrition piece and started learning about that. And now the gym is just like part of who you are, right? Like you're like, okay, right, I'm doing right. this thing. It's just happening every day. And then the diet thing seems more manageable to like then have that learning curve not be so intense with trying to do both at once. Exactly. And then like, even with the diet, don't try to do all three macros at once. Like just start with your calories or just start with your protein. Like don't try to bite off more than you can do. Yeah. So how was prepping, you know, back then with, with six kids? Cause I have girls that have zero kids now and they're like, Oh my God, this is so overwhelming. And I'm like, (laughs) try having one kid, but like six kids, you know, how is prepping with six kids? Cause you're like doing your cardio and your training and Mm -hmm. you're on poverty macros. Like I'm Mm -hmm. sure your patience was likely a little thinner than usual. (laughs) So first, first of all, I have an amazing husband. He seems like it. I did see him on some of your videos. He is amazing and he is so supportive and he is absolutely wonderful. But with that being said, it was still very hard. Like I had, I was on 90 minutes of cardio for six months. Six months? Six months. 90 minutes a day? Yes. 90 minutes a day Oh my goodness! for six months because I had to do like, I did my prep and then I got, got canceled and I was still in prep until who knows how, like mm-hmm. we didn't know when COVID was going to be over or when it was going to happen. So for six months, I did 90 minutes of cardio every single day. So I got up at three 30 in the morning mm-hmm. because my workouts were four hours because I had to do my lifting mm-hmm. and then I had to do my cardio. So it took me four hours. So I'd get up at three 30 in the morning so I could go to the gym, be there at four when I opened and then get my whole workout in and then be on with my day. And I, I also like, I was so exhausted. I gave up my garden. I didn't do a garden that year. I like, I had to let so many things go. Mm-hmm. My house was rarely clean. I was just so tired. I would just literally sleep on the couch whenever I possibly could. I had to hide from the kitchen so I wouldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I get it. <laughs> Laughing no, with I you. I literally... <laughs> I would literally be like, I have to be upstairs or have to be outside. I cannot be anywhere near the kitchen Mm -hmm. because I would just eat. And then, and 
and I, or else I would try to just like go sleep or do something because do something else because I was just so tired. So it, it was rough. It was really hard. My kids had a crappy mom for that nine months. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel that I, I remember my last prep. I, I had to tell my son to like, cause nut butter was a thing for me too. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, you need to go put this in your room. <laughs> like there was certain foods. Like I'm like, I you can't have around you. Yeah. I'm like, I can't, you can't, I cannot be trusted. You know, my, my son yeah. would hear my bedroom door open and he would be like out here be like, what are you doing? What are you eating? <laughs> You know, uh-huh. he was on like food patrol. It was, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad, but oh, you get funny. That like point. I, but the peanut butter, you're, you're not better. Oh my gosh. I would obsess about peanut butter. Mm-hmm. I would just like fantasize about just eating spoonfuls of peanut butter. Yes. Yeah. It was to the point where like, I told my coach, don't put nut butter in my plan. Like I want it so bad, but like 15 grams is nothing. And uh-huh. I'm not going to listen. Enough. I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm going to weigh that with my eyeballs. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm just going to be like a big old spoon. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. So I oh, feel you on that. I, I did a reel about that because I feel that so much about peanut butter when you like weigh it and it's like, Oh, when mm-hmm. you like have a big, big old mixing spoon, it's so what sad. you want it to be. <laughs> so sad. It's true though. It's true. And I'm sure there's yeah. so many competitors that'll be listening that are like, Oh yeah, I totally feel that. It's just, oh it's, my it's definitely a trigger food. And I think too, because mainly like bodybuilding diets are so, so low in fat and dietary fat mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that your body is just like, it's, it's craving it. You know, you're living it's on your own it. body fat and it's like, you just need that. And yeah. And it's delicious. You know, speaking of that though, I remembered very distinctly cause I was just like obsessing about the peanut butter and I just craved it. And it was probably, I think six weeks after uh, my show in August that when I had, I had put on a little bit of body fat and I remember like, oh my gosh, the cravings are gone. Mm -hmm. Like I, it was, it was the best feeling ever. I was not like just, it was crazy. And I remember thinking, wow, that is so cool. Like Mm -hmm. our bodies know what they want. They know what they need. They're trying to just like scream at us. And then when we are in a healthy, healthier state, you know, with a little bit more body fat, like Hey, it works how it should. We're not craving that or obsessing about peanut butter. It's so crazy. I have those little epiphanies every once in a while. Like I went to breakfast with a friend the other day Mm -hmm. and, you know, we did like our usual like egg whites and whatever. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to split a short stack of pancakes instead of us like being, you know, Mm -hmm. just getting, she's like, yeah. So we shared it and I was like four bites in and I was like, Oh, this is like so sweet. I can't do it. Like we left half of it there in prep, like post prep. I would have eaten everything and her food mm-hmm. and my food and like asked for more. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. It is so crazy. And honestly, like it was such a good thing for me to go through that because I feel like I can um, now relate with people with eating disorders or with bad relationships with food. And in fact, I want to do a video on this um, for my Instagram talking about it because like I've been there where you, you know, you're, re- you're so restrictive and then you just binge so hard. And like I binged where I, I wouldn't stop. I felt so sick and I was just, I didn't even care. I was just like, I'm just eating everything I can because right now is my time. It's my time to binge. I just got, I just got to get it all in. I ate so much cake. I, then I went to chocolate chips and I felt so sick and I was like, I don't even care. I'm just still going to eat because I knew that after my binge was over, I like had to restrict again. Yeah. You like you to and get so back, back on track. That's where the problem was. And that was like my unhealthy relationship with food was doing that. And so now I like, cause people would always be like, Oh, I just have one cookie and then I'm fine. I'm like, Who that? I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so, and so now I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that when you are not super restricting, yeah, you can have one cookie and you're okay. Totally. And you're not like have to eat the whole pack. But I've been there. I've been on that end where you have to eat the whole pack because you're trying to survive. For sure. For sure. And you know that if you don't eat the whole pack right now, <laughs> like you're it's, not, yeah, it's going to haunt you. It's just yes. going to be like in your brain. I know. It's so bad. I know. It's so, so bad. I don't know if you experienced anything like that, but totally. I most certainly did. For sure. For sure. I mean, just uh, so many shows post show, it would be like that for, like you said, probably four to six weeks ish. And then you know, it would creep up like every once in a while, you know, I'd be good. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a span of a few days and be like, Oh, okay. Feel good. I feel good. And then something would happen. I'd be triggered yeah. by something. And then it would start again. Whereas now I'm like, I'm good. Like it's, it doesn't even phase me now during my, you know, my period time and PMS, I'm a little more craving and like snacky mm-hmm. and things like that, but it yeah, is nowhere, are. nowhere near a binge because that sick feeling 
of you've consumed so much, like your stomach hurts when you go to sleep. Like you're, and then you just have the guilt too. Yeah, and then you're sweating at night, and the guilt, and then the next day it's just it's it's awful. So I, it is awful. But you know what? It's good that we experience that, so then we can be like, I know how that is. Totally, I know how that is, and I know I don't want to be there. So anyway, that's why people will ask me, like, are you going to do another show? And I'm like, yeah, I think (laughs) it would be cool to see the growth that I've had in the past three years, like the muscle growth. But knowing what it did to me mentally and my relationship with food. I don't want to experience that part again, because there is the good, the bad and the ugly. And that was the ugly. And it's really hard. It's, you know, it's really hard once you've experienced that it's like, you have this, just this, at least for me personally, in my experience, like I have this, like the thought of it kind of almost gives me like a low level anxiety. Like if I really want to do it, I'm like, oh, but I don't know. It's like playing with fire a little yeah. bit, you know, yeah, no, for sure. Because I know on the other end and I think just having done it so much that I'm like better equipped with like better mental tools and things like that. But there is just so much of that. I feel like that actually works, mm-hmm. you know, because once you get to a point where you're like, you know, working out for four hours and you're like your a thousand body calories, your, your body instinct. just takes over. Takes it's, over. It's, yep. <laughs> you're, there's only so much mental power you're going to have. Uh-huh. It's crazy. Oh, for sure. And it's funny because last year, my friend, my friend, or this is like, this is a while ago, but yeah, my friend did a cut and she was like, do you want to do a cut with me? Or I had other people trying to do a cut. And I swear I have rebelled against doing cuts because I, I'm like, it's giving me PTSD. I know. I can't, I can't do it. It's yeah. I'm kind of right there too. You know, I have a coach right now and I'm just trying to you know, I have like some body goals. I have something going on in uh, June and I want to get just like, you know, probably drop like 10 pounds maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's like the second that I'm like, I feel like this is a little bit of like, I'm deprived a little bit, you know, (laughs) because I am in a little bit of a cut and it's nothing compared to prep. Nothing. No, nothing. Yeah. But even that I'm like, I don't like feeling hungry. Like I don't like (laughs) feeling full and gross. Like when I would, you know, over consume, but like, the feeling of just being hungry, like that deep prep hunger. That's not like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm a little hungry. I can probably wait like an hour or two. Not a big deal. That like the prep hunger where you're just like just starving. Yeah. yeah. I, I always like I always would say, I just want to eat my left arm. I can just eat my arm off. <laughs> yes. There's only so much that gum will do, you know? I mean, oh, I was going sure. through packs and packs of gum. Crazy. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. So needless to say, since then, I I have not cut. I haven't cut. I won't do it. I I will just, I'm living a happy life at maintenance and that's how I've maintained my physique. Honestly, is just like, I, I, uh, I'm in at maintenance and I just lift heavy weights and I just push myself in the gym and that's where, where in my consistency lies. And that's great because you have obviously the physique to prove it and like the mental ease as well, like without having Mm -hmm. to be super restrictive. So that's awesome. That's the best position you can be in. Yeah, and it really is. And it really is. And I'm honestly happy. I'm happy with where I'm at. And I've, I've, I've accepted the body fat that's on my body. You know, it's cool to look back at those lean pictures and be like, oh, man, that'd be sweet to have that again. But you yeah. know what? I know I know what it takes to be there. Right. You know exactly what it takes. And it's like uh-huh. it's a whole like it's a whole like job like that that takes and consumes so much of your not only like your actual physical time but like your mental real estate is just like occupied by what you can't do and what you have to do and what's next and I can't even imagine with six kids too and then also trying to juggle your own personal schedule with prep that must have been a lot (laughs) it was hard but you know it's one of those things that you look back on you're like wow I did that yeah exactly and everybody's alive yeah (laughs) everybody's still alive it's crazy. All the, honestly, like prep aside, like I've had six kids. We know, and you have kids Mm -hmm. like having babies going through that phase of life, just all of these really hard, hard things that we do. And we, and we make it out on top. Like we rise to the occasion and we make it out for sure. And it teaches you so much too. I always, you know, every, every prep, every child, every situation has like taught me so much. And I feel like it's just better equipped me for dealing with life, honestly. Truly. And I think back and I think all of the hard things that I have been through, like the first year of my, my sixth baby's life was so hard. I just was my sixth baby. That's a lot of kids. So it was a hard family adjustment. In addition to he had health issues and other things like that. And it was, and then, you know, the postpartum, Mm -hmm. you know, everything that you go through with that, it's like, 
gosh, that was so hard. But now looking back, I know I went through those things so I could help other people. Like all of the things that we go through that are so hard Mm -hmm. and so difficult, it's usually for, for helping other people and say, Hey, I've been there. Yeah. I know what that feels like. Let me help you. I can empathize with you for sure. to help other people. And that's what I love. I love that too. That's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing too. I'm like, yeah. same thing, you know, single mom, very young. And, and that's my thing. It's like, if I can do it there, I'm no different than you are. Like we can yeah. do this and I can help you like not do things the way that I did, you know, like learn from my mistakes essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with your pregnancies, did you, did you, were you working out during all your pregnancies? Were you pretty active? How, like, did you gain a lot of weight? You know, how was that for you transitioning from like pregnancy to pregnancy? So all the moms are going to relate with this, with this statement, but (laughs) it is so hard to try to get into shape in between your pregnancies because you know you're just going to get pregnant again and you're like oh and I'm starting over. Yeah. And so yeah. that was really hard for me every single time. Like I stayed active, you know, cuz I liked how it made me feel and I liked, you know, I used to run, I used to do the beach body videos, I used to, you know, do whatever I could, but every single time I got pregnant I was like oh I'm starting over. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. was and it was really hard and so it wasn't until after I had my sixth baby that I was like, okay, I knew he was my last one. And that's when I like, really was like, I'm going for this. I'm getting my body back. And that's when I really like focused, took the pictures, went to town and I had no idea I would end up where I am today with this, but I was, I was self-driven and motivated because I was going to get my body back. But it's funny that you ask how, if I was active in between my pregnancy or during my pregnancies. No, I was not. I was literally, I just grew a baby. I had pregnancies where I was either very sick, mm. throwing up all the time, or, or, um, I had, uh, preterm labor issues. Like I would have contractions that started about 20 weeks. Mm. And then a couple of the pregnancies I was put on bed rest. Um, I had a daughter that was born, you know, like a month early, Mm, yeah, scary so stuff. she had to, yeah, she had to be in the NICU. So I had kind of a ris- risky pregnancies in that aspect. All my kids were born a little early. So no, I didn't, I didn't work out during any of my okay. pregnancies because I was either too sick or I couldn't. So yeah. it was just like, I just grew a baby and then I started over when, when I, after yeah, I had Yeah. So after the six, you were like, okay, it's my time now. Yeah. Yeah. And that was it. And I was like, okay, taking pictures and we're doing this thing. Mm-hmm. I bet. Yeah. So with six kids, how like you have got to have a like structure, like how, how do you juggle momming with six kids? And I'm sure they all have their own like homework, school activities and things. And then you're like, you have this robust Instagram. I know you also train clients as well, right? In person. Yeah. That all didn't happen until after COVID. My husband started working from home after, you know, he does, um, computer software. Mm-hmm. And so he was able to do switch to full, full time ho- working from home at, since then. And so I was able to start teaching classes and that's when kind of, I started doing my Instagram more. And, but up until that point, like, no, I was just on my own fitness journey with my, with my kids. And I, it is busy being a mom of six. And so the only time I could go without excuses, cause the day is just nuts was early in the morning. So I just would have to get up like four 30 in the morning and go. And you know, this is part, 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 partly during my prep. So three 30 in the morning, yeah. got a little earlier and then go, and then, you know, just be a mom the rest of the day. But that was the only time I had to myself. Yeah. So you knock your training out still first thing in the morning. Is this like your routine now? I'm always curious, you know, when I talk to specifically like moms, but, um, you know, women who are, juggling a lot. Like what are the first couple hours of your day look like? Because generally success leaves clues, right? And you're successful in your, obviously your health and fitness goals. Um, and you have, you know, you have children, you're married. So I'm always like, okay, what is the first couple hours? What does that look like for you? So you get up, you go to the gym. Is that, do you have like any kind of like meditation practice or practice or prayer or anything that you do that like starts your day? And that's like, you filled your cup up and then like, okay, now I can go and, you know, be of service for the kids. Yeah. I, I kind of, I wake up and I'm a firm believer in the way that you like talk to yourself and like your mindset. And so I like to, um, like when I wake up, you know, kind of talk to myself and choose that I'm going to have a good day and I'm going to have a good attitude. And then I kind of go over in my mind, 
what I want to accomplish that day. And this is all, it all has to be done before the family wakes up and before anything else happens, because I've had mornings where I don't get up early and then like I'm rushing to get the kids Mm -hmm. up and I'm, and then we're screaming to get each, get, get the kids out the door and it's mass chaos and I'm hurrying to feed them. And then it's just like, Oh, and it just feels chaotic. And I've had mornings like that. And so to avoid, to avoid that, I know the importance of getting up early and starting like a routine and calm. And that sets the tone for your whole entire day. And you Mm -hmm. can have a much more um, successful, like productive day when you do that. And so granted getting up early and starting to go to the gym early, it created that habit in me. And I continue to do that, even though I don't need to go early now, Mm -hmm. I have more flexibility in my schedule. Um, I still do. And I still get up early and get my kids breakfast and get that routine because it just makes the whole day better. Yeah. And then you have less to like have to tackle in case something comes up later. You know, that's my biggest Mm -hmm. thing when I'm telling women, like most of my six most consistent, successful clients knock it out in the morning because Mm -hmm. they, you know, something happens, somebody gets sick, you got to pick up a kid at school or something like that. And then life, yeah, life life just life, life gets lifey. It doesn't care if you have fitness goals, right? (laughs) So if you just get in there and knock it out, it's not ideal. Like I will admit (laughs) three 30 sounds awful. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It it, it sounds absolutely awful, but you know, in a season in your life where that's just what you have to do to get things done, you know, you get it done. And it's terrible for the first, I, I tell my clients like the first couple of weeks, you know, cause we have 5.00 AM sessions and things like that. But mm-hmm. once you get into a rhythm and you feel good and your energy picks up and everything, your yes. body will start waking up and it's just getting past that hurdle and not hitting snooze. <laughs> I know you can't, you can't hit snooze. And honestly, if you think about it this way, like if you were going on vacation, you're going to adjust to that time zone. So you just need to, you just need to adjust to the the time difference. But the thing is, it's like, you have to, I, I, I loved watching shows at night with my husband. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I had to give that up because I had to go to bed. I was so tired. So I couldn't watch my shows at night and I haven't watched a show in who knows how long because I, I go to bed earlier now, yeah. but so you, you can't have it all. Something has to give, but like that, that's how you be successful. Though. You knock it out in the morning and you will, you, you look at what, what you're willing to give up to make it happen. Totally. So in your abs by Amy, like kind of like Instagram persona, how did that come? Like, how did that take off for you? Oh gosh. So I, I, I was so nervous starting that page. I didn't, It was, it was nothing that I ever planned on doing. I never thought I would be here. I never thought that this, anything would come of this. So the reason why I started it is as I was in the first part of my journey and I, I did start to, you know, make some transformations in my body. I started getting lots of questions at the gym. People would stop me and ask me like, Hey, what are you doing? Or what do you do? Are you a trainer? And I was like, no, I'm just, no, I just like to show up to the gym. Like I just live here four hours a day. (laughs) No. Um, but I, but that I would, I would start getting these questions. And so I thought, Oh gosh, well maybe I do. Cause that was one of the questions. Well, do you have an Instagram? And I was like, no. So anyway, I thought, well, maybe I'll just start one just to like answer questions for people and just see if I could help them out and just have a place for for people to go and say, yeah, that's on my Instagram page. This is what happened. And so I started out that way. I was so nervous, but I, one of my friends told me, she's like, just be yourself, just be yourself. Best piece of advice. And that's all I've done is I've just been my dorky, crazy, (laughs) like just what it like wanting to help people Mm -hmm. self. And it's, it's just kind of grown organically from there because I I truly enjoy helping people and sharing my journey. And my journey helps other people because I'm literally just the most normal mom of six. And I, we have a small house. We're nothing fancy. Like I'm just your average mom. And if, and if you can relate with me because of my journey and I can help you, then then I've done my job. I love that. That's amazing. That's so awesome. And you just organically grew. I mean, you have a yeah. pretty great following. That's incredible. Congratulations for that. Thank you. It was, yeah. it was my, it honestly, it was my stupid reels. Is it? Okay. It yeah. Was the, it was the reels. I just, I, I, I had so much fun. As soon as I started figuring them out, I was like, oh, these are a thing. And so I did a couple of them that they went viral. I remember I, I remember when I hit my first thousand followers and I was like, Oh my gosh, a thousand is so much. And then, um, <laughs> and then I, I made a reel about leg day 
And that was my first reel that hit like a million views. And I could not believe it. But I went from like a thousand followers to 7,000 followers. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's great. I know I'm so bad with reels. It's like, I feel like such an old person. I'm like, um, there's too many options (laughs) to like make them and piece them together. You know, I know. I've actually always enjoyed doing like, I've, I've made home videos for my kids. Okay. I've always enjoyed like photography, videography. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it. And so when that was a thing, I'm like, oh, these are fun. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of fun with them. And that's, that's kind of how it is. So if I enjoy it, if it's not your thing, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it obviously it's worked. So that's fantastic. So you have, we have to ask abs by Amy, because I'm sure everybody asks you this. What is your favorite ab exercise? (laughs) Oh my gosh. So probably, probably planks, honestly, because it's like, abs, but it's like your shoulders and your total total body. And I started, I have it on my app. I have my whole plank routine on my app, but I started all of my workouts with this plank routine that I created in my head. And I was like, this is good. Okay. And so I would do that every single day before you trained before I did my other lifts, I would okay. start, I'd start with this like plank routine and I did it every single day. And so I'm going to have to go deep in the creep and see if I can find some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And share yeah. It. It's, it's, it's on my Instagram somewhere. I know it's in my app. It's, but anyway, I, I love planks. <laughs> okay. That's super easy. You don't need any fancy equipment for that. Nope. It's super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Good okay. stuff. Yeah. So a couple more just like random questions I love to ask my guests is if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, like what would it be? Like just healthy meal. That's like, Oh, my go-to protein, whatever. Like what's your favorite if you, if you had to choose? (laughs) Oh, I love food so much. It's hard to narrow it down. (laughs) It is Um, like maybe a go-to healthy, healthy food. Yeah. Like, you know, something that you, Tacos. Okay. That's, tacos. that's probably one of tacos. my hands down. Oh, favorites too. I, I love tacos. Yeah. Just like I've been eating the, I get the chicken, the rotisserie chicken from oh, Costco, yeah. throw it on a corn tortilla with some guacamole and, and peach mango salsa. Oh, that that's amazing. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Or fish tacos or any tacos. I love yeah. tacos. Well, I think there's so, it's so convenient. It's super easy. And like rotisserie chicken, you can grab that. It'll take you five minutes to assemble that. But I think so many people assume that like like eating good or eating healthy or whatever has to be so complicated and you have to do this elaborate meal prep and like eat boiled chicken and all this. And I'm like, absolutely and plain not. Rice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No way, Jose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> the other one favorite, like hack to just getting stuff accomplished, especially as a busy mom, like to get up you, early. <laughs> yeah. Get up early. Do you have any, honestly, kind of, do you have like a planner? Do you use a, like a schedule? You just, you just get up early no, and tackle I think the day. Just, yeah. Just find your routine mm-hmm. and just stick with that routine. But honestly, getting up early as a mom, that has not only helped me in my like parenting six children and having like right. a busy, a busy life or in my fitness goals. It's literally getting up early and starting the day before my kids wake up, before things get chaotic and just like having that like structured okay, we're ready for stuff. Breakfast is going, you know, like you feel prepared. Mm -hmm. That has been the number one thing that's helped me in every aspect of my life is just getting up early and being prepared for the day. Yeah. Do you do a lot of meal prep at all? Like fruit, like prepared Um, food. So you're just, your stuff is ready to go. Yeah, we do. We do. We do not like, you know, the containers and stuff, but we do like, uh, like general easy meal prep. Like we'll just cook a bunch of chicken and have it in the fridge or have Mm -hmm. the rotisserie chicken and have it in the fridge, mostly protein. Yeah. That's the easiest one to just knock out. And then carbs, you can kind of figure out. Yeah. Carbs come from anywhere, but yeah. So that's about it. It's not like specific stuff, but yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I think that's kind of when you're in maintenance and you're not like trying to like go into a super crazy cut or anything, it's convenient. You have it handy. It's ready to go. But like I think we are in a spot where like, if you were stranded in some random restaurant, you would know how to eat. Like you'd figure it out. You could you know, piecemeal a a well round meal together. That's going to support your training goals or whatever. And you not feel super deprived. So it's like, it's easy. Yeah. Well, this was super fun to be. 
Yeah, exactly. This was super fun. I'm so glad to have you on. I appreciate you for coming on and sharing all of your information with us. Thank you. I would love for my listeners to start following you. Your Instagram is so fun. I love seeing your stories pop ups because stories are my favorite. (laughs) And so I'm like, oh, she has a new one. I want to see. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. But can you tell everybody (laughs) where they can find you? I know you've got a website and Instagram. And if you have any programs that you would like to just mention, that would be great. Yeah. So my Instagram is abs by Amy, my TikTok and my YouTube. I don't really do much on YouTube, but it's all just abs by Amy. One word. Um, my website is abs by Amy fitness. You can, you can go on to, um, abs by Amy fitness.com. You can see where to book classes with me. I teach strength training twice a week. I also have an app that has my, um, my daily workouts and my class workouts, some nutrition guides and my husband's lifting plan on there. So I love my app. I'm going to put a lot of work into it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's what I do now currently. So I have that and yeah, that's right. That's where you can find me. I love that. Well, I will plug all of that into the show notes so everybody can find you super easy by just checking the show notes and clicking and being teleported to all your, your sites. So, um, so thank you so much you for so much. being on the podcast and, um, thank you and what you're doing and I will see you over on the gram. Boss. Thank you for listening to Boss Bitch Radio. It would mean the world to me if you could rate and review the podcast. If you could give us a five-star review on iTunes, drop us a little comment. We will read those and we offer prizes as a ethical bribe for you to leave us some great mojo and words of affirmation. You know, that is my love language. And also, if you're over on Spotify, you can rate and review it there as well. All of this helps other women, other people, other folks see us, hear us, and learn from all of the amazing boss bitch tools and hacks and hopefully get some LOLs. And if not, if anything, if you could share this with one person, I'd love you forever. And I know you are just here for my undying love. And last but not least, please, 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 please come find me over on Instagram so we can be buddies. We can be Insta fam over there. I am Diane Flores underscore IFBB underscore pro. Come say hi, drop me a DM, let me know what you think of the podcast. I'm always open for new suggestions and feedback as well. And I hope you listen again soon. Bye.